Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are coming to us from. I want to welcome you back to the School of the Word. I'm so glad to have you. We really consider it a blessing that you are tuning in to be able to study with us. As we continue our studies in the School of the Word, let's just begin by pausing in open prayer. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you and we bless you as we continue our study in your word, through the school of the word, we ask you to give us understanding and help us that these truths that we are learning will make our study of the Old Testament more fruitful and such a blessing to our lives. We don't understand it in a much better understanding of your, what you say in your word in the Old Testament in Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome back. The last two weeks we looked at um, the people that Israel interacted with in the Old Testament. People who were in the land, when Israel came to the land, the Philistines, the Canaanites, the Amorites, and the Phoenicians, and the people who were on the borders of Israel, the Amorites, Amor, Ammonites, the Moabites, the Edomites, the Amalekites, and the Midianites. In our session today, we'll begin, we'll continue on from where we left off and begin to look at the religions of the land of Canaan. Deuteronomy 7, 6 says to us, it was God's word to the Israelites, the Lord has chosen you out of all the people on the earth, on the face of the earth, to be his people. So Israel was a chosen people to be God's chosen over all the people on the face of the earth. Now ancient Israel lived in a world of many nations and it had to interact with these nations. Some of these people groups that we've looked at appear briefly, then disappear. Others recur through several books of the Old Testament and clearly had a major impact on Israel's life and history. For many of us, when we think of the Philistines, we only know them in relation to the story of Goliath, who was defeated by King David before David became the king shepherd boy, with five stones and a sling. Yet scripture and history has a lot more to say about the Philistines, even including their worship, and how that they worshipped a god who was known as Dagon. I will say before, the land of Canaan finds itself at the crossroads in an area known as the ancient Near East. So as we discuss the religions of the ancient Near East, we'll discuss the different communities that held these beliefs. But we'll concentrate in our study on the religions that existed in the land of Canaan, the land of promise. The other areas had their own religions, Egypt had its own religions, Mesopotamia its own religions, and the other areas in ancient Near that they own religions, but who concentrate on the religions that were existing in the land of promise, the land of Canaan? Let's begin by asking the question, what is religion? Someone has said, has defined religion as, has said religion will broadly, broadly defined as the human quest for, the experience of, and the response to the holy or the sacred. So this human activity of looking for or quest for experiencing and responding to the holy or the sacred expresses itself in three ways. Through our thoughts, intellectual expressions, through our actions and practical things that we do, and through fellowship that communion expression that we share with others of like 
minded belief. So the idea of community is very and extremely important in this definition. As these communities interacted with each other, they attempt to answer at least two questions. Why are we where we are today? And secondly, how do we stay where we are today? So the first question, why are we where we are today? If you pose that question to the Canaanites, the Canaanites would say to you, we are where we are today because the creator God, El, created all things. He and his wife, Asherah, had children. And those children caused problems. That is why we are where we are today. If you ask the Mesopotamians, the people from Mesopotamia would have told you, we are where we are today because we were created as slaves to do the work of the gods. The work that the gods did not want to do. So they created us and gave us that work. What about the other question? How do we stay where we are today? If you ask that question, the Egyptians, ancient Egypt, would have told you to stay where we are today, just observe Mahat. Mahat simply means do not steer the pot. Don't steer the pot, just leave it as it is. The Mesopotamians would have said to you, just stay out of the radar, stay out of sight of the gods if you want to stay the way you are today. So this communal thing was extremely important in religion. One thing we know about the religion of the ancient Near East is that they were closely tied to place and politics. The gods of the ancient Near East we are associated with particular places, particular cities, and particular nations. The temples that were built functioned quite literally as the house of the God, where the God resided in a form of a cult statute. A statue was made of this particular God. The priests and the followers of the God fed the God, clothed the God and cared for the God in a series of various rituals and offerings. The chief member of the God, the chief follower of the God, was the king or the ruler of the city. As the one who built the temple and the chief official in the cult, the king or the ruler had that special relationship with the God. Ancient, in our time we, we normally bring difference between what is secular and what is sacred, but that difference did not exist in the ancient world. Secular culture was basically sacred. At the center of every city was a temple, and the temple was the home of the chief god. So whoever was the chief god, the chief deity of the area, he resided at the center of the temple of the city, at the city state. There were smallest temples that were dedicated to the spouse or the mistresses of the chief god in smaller places or around the city, but the main temple was dedicated to the chief god. So this relationship and association between place, the god, the deity, and royalty, the king or the ruler of the city made religion a very powerful sector in defining identities in the ancient Near East. Most religions of the ancient Near East were polytheistic. They recognized and worshipped more than one God. Israel comes into this equation on the back of a belief known as monotheism. The concept of a single God 
with universal authority. Remember, the other gods were restricted or were limited to the city where they were in charge. But Israel comes into the land with the concept of a single God who does not have limitation but has universal authority. And this stands out as a unique development. Now before we get understand, religion, let's just do some terms. Some few terms that are important. Whenever you study issues of religion, you come across many terms that require defining if you're going to have a proper understanding. When you study the Old Testament, you come across terms like the Asherah Thrones or the High Places. We'll deal with those as we go on. Let's do some terms. What is polytheism? Polytheism is the belief that there are many gods. Another, another term you're going to come across when you study religion is pantheism. Pantheism is the view that everything and everyone and everyone and everything is God. Other views we are going to come across is monolatry. Monolatry is the worship of only one God, but you still acknowledge the existence of other gods. So there's one God, but there are also other gods, so you choose to worship this one God and not the other gods. You have another concept known as henotheism. Henotheism, you recognize many gods, but you choose to focus exclusively on one God. And that one God is usually the God of the family or the God of the clan. <coughs> another concept to come across is a concept known as Atenism. Atenism was the worship of the Egyptian god Aten. If you go into Egyptian history, you come across Aken Naten, one of the pharaohs of Egypt. Atenism was the worship of the Egyptian god Aten, who was a representation of the sun god. Some liberal scholars and biblical skeptics argue that Moses must have borrowed the idea of one God from Atenism when they were in Egypt in slavery and that Yahweh, the God of the Israelites, the supreme God, the one God, the only true God was simply Aten repackaged. Monotheism, as you have said, is a belief in only one true God who is the only creator, the only sustainer, and the only judge of all creation. Nothing about religion is that religion also involved the idea of texts. In religion, you have a text, the text that guides the adherence and the worshippers. The text delivers to us the beliefs and the attitudes of the people. The text of Mesopotamia revealed that in spite of doing things correctly as the gods demanded and required, the gods still turned on their worshippers for no reason at all, being nasty to the worshippers. Egyptian religions and their documents show that the gods did not turn on worshippers unless the worshipper did not observe Mahat, the worshipper steered the pot, did not leave things as they are, he still, so the, the gods turned on that worship. But if you want to be able to understand the worship or the religion or of the Israelites, we use the ancient Egyptian Israelite text known as the Hebrew Bible or the Old Testament. In cultures where there wasn't much writing, some of them did not write, so in such cases, there was not much writing. Our understanding of the religion is gained by examining material culture. Material culture refers to things like the temples, the altars, the images, the idols, the figurines. Those things that people worshipped, or in present where they worshipped, examining those things will give us some understanding of the kind of religion that was practiced. So what are we saying in this short 
session. What we are saying is that the people, when Israel came into the land, there were people in the land. Israel was told to occupy the land of Canaan, the land of promise, and when they came into that land, there were already people in the land. They found the Canaanites, the Phoenicians, the Philistines, and the Amorites. And these people had religions that they were practicing. We also saw that the, um, bordering this promised land were the Ammonites, the Moabites, the Edomites, the Amalekites, and the Moabites, the, the Amalekites and the Midianites. And these people also had their own practices that they were practicing. They had religions. So, when Israel came across and entered into this world, there were religions existing in the area. And they had to come into that area with a concept known as monotheism. The belief in one true God only. And the rest are but idols. So, thank you for attending our short lecture today. We'll continue again in the next class. In the next class, we'll begin to look at the religions that existed in that land of Canaan that Israel had to contend with. There are many religions that existed, but we'll look at two major ones in a lot more detail. In Thanks for attending the class. We'll see you again in the next class. If you have any questions or any comments, please post them in the comment section on YouTube or Facebook. Please support this channel by clicking the like button and subscribe to our channel and also share the video so we can take the word out to many across the nations. God bless you. See you in the next class.